This is this is this is. Let go, let go, let go, let go, let go, let go. We won, we won, we won, we won, we won. Okay, so I'm recording this right after the very first football game, Monday Night Football, with the Seahawks versus Denver Broncos. And I don't care what the Seahawks do the rest of the season. We won our first game, the most important game, the game against the Denver Broncos, who the quarterback is Russell Wilson. He's our former quarterback. Now, it was salty. It was spicy. The fans were booing him. Not everybody. There was a lot of Denver fans there. But those Seahawks fans, those Seattle fans, were booing Russell Wilson. And I was kind of booing him a little bit, um, not because I don't like him. I actually do like Russell Wilson a lot. I think he's a great player. I think um, he's always been great. Um, Now, that's what I'm basing my like on, his playing. Um, He didn't play great this game, this game that that they lost. Um, The Seahawks didn't play amazing, but they played better than the Broncos, and and it was enough. You know, we won by, I think it was one point. So, <laughs> yes, we did it. We did it. But, wow, that was uh, that was fun. I had a good time. I went to the game. I went to the game. Um, shout out to Ryan and Chris for the tickets. Thank you so much. Um, main shout out to Chris. It was his tickets. But Ryan, who, who invited me. So, Ryan, Epic Empire, love you, buddy. Sorry that your your team lost. He had a lot of high hopes for the Denver Broncos, and he said he's had eight years of just boring, just nothing good happening with the Broncos. And let me tell you, uh, I know how that feels. Not lately, but I know how that feels, you know, because the Seahawks were really bad for a really long time. But, you know, we might be bad for a couple of years. We're rebuilding right now, and... Um, you got to do those things. And I feel like MXPX is rebuilding a lot right now, too. We're trying to come back. We're trying to get back out there. We're trying to do new things so that it's just not always the same thing over and over. Uh, what I mean by that is, like, po- posting new types of things that you haven't seen us do. <clears throat> um, a lot of people want more just everyday life stuff. So we're trying to post us hanging out, us um, just doing what we do, which is making music, practicing, recording, Um, when we're not doing that, you know, playing shows, traveling, we're not doing that, you know, we're usually together, you know, talking, you know, laughing, just doing, saying something, you know, but, but we have been rebuilding. The team is rebuilding. We're trying to, we've actually added a few, few members and it's been going a lot better, but at the same time that it's going better, it's also not, you know, there's a lot of things that are, that are, um, blocking our way. You know, there, there's, um, obstacles everywhere and I know you know the stoic thing to say is is that the obstacle is the way Ryan Holiday's book obstacle is in the way is a is a great book and it's a great message Um, if there's an impediment 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 how do you say that if there's an impediment to your path in your path the way is not to go around the way is to go through it over it whatever Um, I think that's obviously a metaphor. There's a lot of different things you can do, but face your problems head on. That's what he's trying to say. That's what the Stokes are saying. And um, that's based on, I think it's Marcus Aurelius, um, meditations, his his diaries. I've got diaries too. I actually just bought a new Moleskine diary book because I couldn't find the one that I'm currently, currently meaning like this whole year I've been working on it not working on it, writing in it. Um, it's been a while since I've written in it, so I can't find it. I thought I had left it in Bremerton when I was in Waco, and I couldn't find it in Waco. So here I am in Bremerton, can't find it. What I mean to say is, to, you know, I, it seems like I've gone on a, a little tangent there, but talking about diaries, um, Marcus Aurelius, 
Marcus Aurelius was a seat. Yeah, he was a, the leader of the Roman Empire at one point. Um, one of the most famous guys, not as famous as Caesar, but um, he wrote in his diary and it was not meant for anybody. It was meant just for his thoughts, his thoughts alone. And they're so good. I don't know, you know, if, you know, th what we're reading today, the translated version of this is word for word, meaning for meaning what he was writing. And if it is, it's beautiful. It's brilliant. I'm sure it's close, right? But you just don't know because I don't speak the language. I don't speak, what is it, Greek or something. Hmm. Is it Italian? It might be Italian. I don't know. <laughs> uh, here I am just talking, not thinking. I don't know what, what words are going to be coming out of my mouth. Um, this week is going to be crazy, but uh, I'm, I'm happy to have, uh, well, like I said, I'm recording this before we go to Music for Cancer in Montreal. So I don't know what's going to happen. And there's no sense, you know, plugging the date or whatever, but like, it's kind of funny doing these some of these pre-recordings because I, I usually record the, the podcast like the week of, um, like the, right before you know the podcast comes out. So this one is it's actually not too too long before the podcast comes out. But um, since we're doing a, a major event on Saturday, I got to make sure I do this podcast before Saturday. That's that's what I'm trying to say. So I don't know how it's going to shake out, but I'm pretty excited about it. We're ready to go. Um, Still tweaking the set list here and there. That's happening for sure. But um, it's the travel. It's really the travel part that really I get nervous about. Not nervous for flying or anything. It's more, will it go smoothly? What will happen? What, you know, what will get messed up? You know, so I'm not going to dwell on that too much. And in fact, you know, why bother? By the time you guys hear this, it's, it's, it's over. So I'll, I might have to, I can't amend this. I mean, maybe I can amend this. But, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, MXPX.com, you guys, please go check it out. We have it updated. Um, there's a new little video up. There's a, um, there's, you know, we have shows coming out. We have shows coming up, and they're on sale right now. Please, if you want to go, don't wait. It helps us immensely. You don't even know how much it helps us if you buy tickets as, as soon as you really can. You know, obviously, that's up to you guys, but... We're coming back to Chicago Saturday or Friday, November 18th, Chicago, House of Blues. And then Saturday, November 19th at the Rave in Milwaukee. So Chicago, Milwaukee, we will see you guys. We are very excited. And the shows are going to be a lot of fun. But we need to sell some more tickets. Um, I've been hearing a lot of rumblings lately about, about a lot of tours getting postponed or can't you know canceled slash postponed pushed back um one of which was the melancholy tour um a few to, like european and australian dates i think got pushed back strictly due to low ticket sales and and all that but it, you know i think the economy is just rough right now and and um different people are are feeling it different ways for sure so i'm just saying you know my heart's out to you guys um we're definitely going to be affected by this and have been um, and we're just going to keep working hard. And like I said earlier, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of trying to come out with a reset, you know, we're trying to figure out new things to post and what to do. And we have a new team that, you know, we don't really know we're doing new jobs. Like I'm even, excuse me, doing new jobs all the time. And, and, and so it's like, you know, you do new things, you're going to be sometimes slower at it. You're going to be not as good at first. You're going to be clunky. So it's like every couple of years, MXPX has to kind of kind of reinvent the way we get the word out to you guys. Um, I guess this podcast hasn't changed, but, you know, it's the podcast is kind of set. You know, we don't have crazy amount of different listeners. You know, it's kind of the same listeners for the most part every week. And of course, you know, some of the listeners come in, different listeners each week to listen to a guest. But uh, depending on what I put on the promo, like I should probably put something like, um, I'm thinking about smoking crack on this podcast. Would you guys watch? I'm not going to really do it. But I mean, like something like that would get people to click on the podcast. Like 
just stupid, just the clickbaity. And I don't, I don't want to be clickbaity, so I'm not going to do that. But <clears throat> it's just, this is just a happy place where I try not to like, I put out my promo material every week and I try, you know, I'm not doing much more than that. So, you know, any, anytime people share what we're doing, you know, MXPX wise, that helps us a ton. Anytime you share the podcast, that obviously helps, you know, it really does because people don't pay attention to anything anymore. And, and you know, for a fact, you know, you might not even be paying attention to this podcast. I'm just, I'm just talking to a wall. I don't know. I mean, the really doing these voicemail episodes are, are amazing because I actually hear from you. I actually feel like, oh, there's people listening, you know, because, you know, it, it's not the same as like, say, MXPX, where, you know, you put out a new song and people are like, oh my gosh, I love that new song. Um, which I appreciate, you know, bands always appreciate, artists always appreciate that. And, you know, you can't listen to too much of your hype because people are going to say they love every song, you know. But but I do appreciate you. It, and, and it is not falling on deaf ears when you shout out to MXPX, shout out to me, whatever it is. I, I love it. So I'm out there. I, I'm back out there quite a bit on social media lately. So, shout, you know, give me a shout. I would love it. Um if you want to be on the podcast, there's a, there's a lot of voicemails. I'm not going to get to them all today. I mean, they're just stacking up in the voice in the uh, in the queue. But please call in, leave a voicemail. It could be a question about life, about music, about my band, about the podcast, whatever. Anything we've talked about on the podcast, it could be just a topic, maybe uh, about um, like again music, maybe about love, maybe <laughs> you know people like to ask me advice. You know, I was on Love Line back in the day. Uh, you know, Tom and Yuri were as well. And we would, the people would call in with their, with their love, love issues, you know, girlfriend, boyfriend issues. Um, sometimes it goes beyond that, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was with, uh, Adam Carolla and, uh, Dr. Drew out on K-Rock. But anyway, I digress. Let's get to your voicemails. I didn't tell you the voicemail number yet though, did I? Let's do that. Um, call me at this number, leave a voicemail. It's a Google voicemail. The number is 1-360-830-6660. Looking forward to your call. All right, let's do this thing. Let's get to your voicemails. Let's find your voicemails. How about that? Lego. All right, here we go. First one. Hey, Mike, this is Andrew from Allie and I in Lincoln, Nebraska. I uh, hope you're doing well, man. I have a question about a song, uh, Shanghai in Shanghai. I was wondering if this song is a true story, and if so, would you be willing to give a more detailed explanation? Was there a certain situation you got your, your, yourselves into that, like, inspired you to write this song, or was it just kind of a fun idea that you had? Um I have lots of other questions, but I'm just going to keep it to that for now. I'll probably call back uh, next week or something. But I uh, also just want to say thanks, man, for all the great music and the memories uh, over the years. And so stoked about the new record. You know we're all here waiting for it. So much love, man. Uh, have a good one. Talk to you later. Dude. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for calling. And please do call back. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you were in the secret weapon video. You have a mohawk and you're like kind of crowd surfing or you're, no, not crowd. So you're like dancing or like skanking. Dude, you're awesome, man. I always love hanging out. I see you now and again at shows and, and say hi. So thanks for calling in. Um, Shanghai and Shanghai. Great question. That, that's a song off of the Renaissance EP, I think. Yeah, I think it is. Is it? Is it? No. Wait, is it? No, I think it's on the Left Coast Punk EP. Ah! I have to look this up. This is driving this is gonna drive me crazy. Alright, let me let me find out. Uh Shanghai. I better put MXPX in there. Here we go. You know what's funny is that I, why can't I why can't I remember? You know what what it's on. So crazy. Um, 
Left Coast Punky B. All right, here we go. I was, I was correct. I was correct. I caught myself. All right. All right. Here we go. Um, let me tell you. That was not a true story. I did not get shanghai in Shanghai um, in that regard. But we were, I, one, the band, I was like watching Locked Up Abroad, an episode of that. And I was like, just, and I was talking to the band about it one time. And we were just like, oh yeah, we've seen, we've seen that. You know, Yuri's like, I've seen that. You know, we were just talking about episodes and how, you know, like this show is called Locked Up Abroad and it's, it's about people like smuggling drugs over the border of some foreign country and getting caught and getting put in prison. And, and a lot of times it's like a Turkish prison, prison or a, you know, a Brazilian prison, uh, you know, in, in Russian prison, like really, really crazy stuff um and i was just thinking about you know like what what would, you know what would that be like that, that would be insane and so like i just had an idea because of that conversation with the guys and and watching those shows a little side story chris rowe of the ataris is a huge fan of that show um from back in the day, like he, he watched it back in the day and, and I mentioned that show to him and he was like, oh my God, I, I love that show, Locked Up Abroad, I've seen every episode, I'm obsessed with it, you know, I travel so much that, you know, I go, I, sometimes I'll go to those prisons, you know, or whatever, not to the prisons, but I'll go to, he'll be in those cities. Um, anyway, it gave me the idea for, for a song and then I, I was reading an article about it wasn't an article it was like a story it was like you know like a historical kind of like a interesting kind of thing and and it was about sailors getting shanghaied and it wasn't get they weren't getting shanghaied in shanghai i made that up but uh just the whole term shanghaied getting shanghaied was a thing back in the day i don't know if that's like kind of like not cool to say now but i, I it's a city and it would be kind of like nowadays Mexico City, like because in Mexico, kidnapping is is very very prevalent with with rich folk and and political and you know if the, if they can get ransomed, you know. Um, so nowadays you might say you, you got Mexico Cityed, but but that's the that's how the terms used is Shanghai. You get Shanghai, you get kidnapped, and they would they would kidnap. Uh, sailors and and make them work on the on the boats on pirate boats and work or die you know kind of like princess bride um the dread pirate roberts if you haven't seen princess bride you're missing out one of my favorites one of my all-time favorites so this has been a very educational uh, little question there andrew but uh kind of a little bit of but not not really a little bit of both i haven't ever been kidnapped that i can remember that i'm thinking about but but uh, it came from a real place because we were watching that show. I, I was watching that show separate, and then we were talking about it because Yuri loves it. Any, you know, anytime you talk about something weird, crazy with Yuri, he'll just, like, light up and start talking about it, which is another thing that, you know, maybe we'll start posting. We'll post some videos of, of Yuri and, and all, you know, any of us telling stories or talking or talking about having conversations that we have. How about we get to the next one? All right. Thanks, Andrew. Uh, please do. Please uh, call back. If you got more questions, I'd love to have you back on. Hey, Mike, it's Derek in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, you may have read that uh, recently um, a mutual friend, uh, Brad Fobble, passed away. Mm. And uh, just wanted to, you know, I didn't have any questions. I just wanted to, you know, kind of talk, talk about that for just a minute, just to let you know. Uh, you know, the first time I met him, uh, MXTX was like the kind of thing that brought us together as far as, you know, like I was probably wearing an MXTX shirt at like an open mic. Mm. And, uh, you know, he had told me, uh, about how he moved to Kentucky after living, um, you know, in Bremerton or near, nearby and that, uh, he got to hang out with you some. You showed him some stuff about recording and he had a lot of great things to say about you. And, um, one of the, you know, we had a, uh, an open mic sort of as a remembrance for him 
Mm. Uh, and, you know, on the little, uh, what would you call it, like a uh, slideshow with pictures. There was a picture of him and you and some other people. And that was that was really cool to kind of, you know, cool to see that. And uh, for the open mic, I played uh, Doing Time, you know, just sort of a thing to remember him by. So just kind of wanted to tell that story and let you know that, um, you know, that that was, that was a really cool, you know, kind of connection there. And, uh, you know, it's awesome your music brings people together and, and that, uh, you know, that's something that we kind of had in common there. So thanks so much. Yeah, I did hear about that on Facebook. Thanks for calling in, Derek. Thanks for, uh, yeah, I mean, it's cool to to hear about them and, and know that there was a lot of people that really liked that guy. You know, he had a lot of friends, and, and uh, he would have been really touched by, you know, you having an open mic for him, and, he, and that's how I knew him. I knew, knew him from open mic at the Hi-Fi in Bremerton, West Bremerton, right down the street, not far from my house, great spot. Like, we, we kind of owned the place for a couple of years there. It was a real divey kind of bar, and and there just wasn't a lot of people in there a lot of times. So, like, we, we meaning we, myself, but a bunch of other musicians that I know around, like local musicians, we, we'd all um, separately kind of just go and, and play shows and together. And it was a really special spot. Um, it went through a couple different owners um, and just nobody could, nobody could hack it. Nobody could keep it together. No, nobody could bring people in there. But Brad was a guy I would see there a lot before he moved. He moved away eventually when that place closed down. But um, he was always a nice guy, you know, and I would see him after that. I would, I would mostly just see his post on Facebook. I know a lot of people know know people and then they don't really see them in person much after a while, but you see them on Facebook here and there and you're like, okay, it's good to know that they're they're out there doing their thing. And then to get hit with the news, it's it's a bummer, you know, it's um a lot of people have been passing, you know, here and there and people that I kind of vaguely know and uh it's just wild, you know. It's a it's been a wild couple of years. So, uh I'm glad that that uh that uh you know, we can just have those memories, those those memories that we all can take with us. Brad Fable. Rest in peace, man. <clears throat> let's uh let's move on. He was uh he was a navy guy, I believe. It's probably why he was in Bremerton and ended up moving out, but Nice guy. Good musician. Um, let's go to the next voicemail. Hello, this is Timothy from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Big fan of the next PX. Just wanted to ask a question about the Cooties and the history surrounding how that one album came out and if there's ever been talk about anything else happening with that. Hope to hear from you. Thank you. Cool, yeah. This is, yeah, easy. Um, the Cooties was a side project, for those that don't know. Um, I'm sure you know, Timothy, but it's a side project that we started with. It was Tom from MXPX, Tom Wisniewski, moving from guitar over to drums, because originally Tom was a drummer. I moved from bass to guitar. And then we had uh, our friend Giles on bass. So it was us three. So three piece, uh, we had one practice, we wrote eight songs. Six of those are probably on on the album. Uh, Lisa's Clean, uh, Now the Beach Sucks, At the Beach, uh, a couple others um, made that, you know, made the record. But anyway, that was our first practice. We literally threw names, ideas for songs into a hat or ideas of what to write about. So there was like the beach and then there was, you know, uh, the weatherman, and then there was like, you know, a girl or whatever. So put those into a hat, pulled them out, and that's how we got a bunch of songs about the beach. We weren't like trying to write about the beach. It was just, it was on the things. We're like, okay, let's write some surf songs or whatever. Um, they're not really surfy sounding, but they're punk songs. Um, so 
the Cooties came about just because MXPX was doing well. We were already, you know, signed and touring, and we kind of wanted to just do something for fun while we were home from tours. And our buddy Giles was a great bass player, and we just went for it. We just started this band, and then a little bit after that, we added Eric Buckham, who... Uh, on guitar, so so second guitar. So he played locally with us here and there. Um, played on No Brain. I don't know if you guys remember No Brain from the vinyl version or what would be, if deluxe versions of, of EPs or albums came out back in 1995, this, this would have been the deluxe version of the on the cover EP. Um, the extra songs, one of those was No Brain. Actually, No Brain might have been on the actual EP. Um, you guys will probably know. Somebody will know. <laughs> so anyway, the Cooties. Um, so No Brain. So that was an early, early Cootie song that I wrote with with Eric, Eric Buckham. Me and him wrote that song. Um, I think he... He wrote the music, part of the music in like one line or something. I don't remember exactly, but I wrote the rest. And that's kind of how it was with Cooties is like whoever's singing wrote it, except for the songs where we're all three singing, then we usually, in those cases, one of us wrote like most of the, you know, most of the, the, the music and then each person wrote their own lyrics. That That's very much like that's for the cooties. So, you know, we, we kind of just, because of MXPX, the cooties were a, a band that got a leg up real quick. We were never big or anything, but, like, people would come see us. And we were fun. We were fun. And we, it was just pure fun. Like, again, it wasn't, it was, like, more like Ramon's core style than MXPX is. MXPX, I would say, is more like, uh, I don't know, Bad Religion style with Descendants thrown in because it's really melodic. I, bad Religion style is probably a little, it's not that, it's not that style either. It's like our own, MXPX is kind of our own thing at this point. Like, really, I mean, we've, we've been honed into it, but um, the cooties. So anyway, we added, we added Eric for a while and then he just couldn't, you know, whatever, do it or didn't want to do it or I don't remember what it was. We're still friends he's he's a he makes posters or something he, he's an artist he's really good at what he does he lives in LA um anyway shout out Eric what up buddy um then we added Dale at Dale Yob who was another friend of ours local musician and that a lot of people kind of get mixed up but the cooties is why Dale Yob ended up getting into 90 pound wuss and also Giles played in 90 pound wuss for like a tour but um, Dale Yob was in the in 90 pound wuss for longer I think and also was in uh, he was in Slick Shoes for like an album or two at least one album I think or maybe not an album maybe it was more like a touring cycle but yeah so I mean he, he went on to do a bunch of stuff in his band right now he plays drums for the Fibs great band local local punk band uh, around Bremerton, Washington. And uh, anyway, we added him. He's a great guitar player. He added vocals and, and harmonies, and it was really kind of perfect for, for the cooties because Eric wasn't really much of a singer. Um, we had a blast with it. Um, I don't think we're ever going to do anything else with it, ever. But um, and I think at this point, somebody else probably has a band called the Cooties. Um, if you don't use your name, people just kind of like it's moss and vines and things start growing over it and, and people take it. So great question though. Great topic. Loved it. Loved the cooties. Still a great album. If you guys want to go check it out, it's called let's play house. Nobody listens to it. I think somehow Giles ended up with all the royalties and also made off with some of our merch money, but that's uh that's another story from another time. Let's go on. Let's move on to the next voicemail. Hey, Mike. It's Rufus in Baltimore, Maryland. Just want to say I love the podcast and um, big fan of your band for a very long time. Picked up my copy of uh, The Ever Passing Moment probably when I was 13 or so, and that 
uh, the rest is history. I've been a lifelong fan, and I love a lot of your work. Um, a quick question for you. It's really a base professional, well, a professional base player question for you. I guess I was just wondering, in all your years of uh, touring or just uh, just practicing, rehearsing albums, albums coming out, getting the songs together. I imagine at some point or another you've had an issue with uh, maybe like a hand pain or elbow pain in your in your arms. I was wondering, what do you do about it when you are in a situation where you can't just take a night off to rest as you're on tour? Um, is it just mind over matter? Um, do you have a, like a workout regimen or any special exercises or, I don't know, ancient secrets that like, mm-hmm. all the bass players keep, like, uh, keep in their hip pocket in case they need it? But anyway, just curious what you do to – with pain management when you're up there just strumming away man sure um but yeah that's my question and uh love the podcast love the love your band shout out to yuri with a beast behind the kit and i cannot wait for your new album and if it's if you guys are up for it i think some of us would love to hear what yuri has to say about the the album coming out but anyway thanks for the podcast thanks for all you do uh looking forward to, to hearing you guys soon and uh take care man Cool. Thanks, Rufus. Yeah, man. Um, elbow pain. Uh, great question. It's something I started having. I got like tennis elbow years ago. And it's like, for me, it's not on the outside of the elbow. It's on the inside. So it's like right here. But honestly, like over the years and right there over the and it doesn't it doesn't hurt when I'm playing. And over the last couple of years, it kind of went away. Like, I think part of it was like because I was really working out hard. I was lifting heavy back in those days, like a couple of years ago. I mean, I wasn't like a beefcake or anything, but I was, for me, it was heavy. Uh, and that maybe contributed to it because I feel like since I have been lifting a lot lighter in my workouts lately and, and I work out way less than I do used to, um, just due to a, a lot of things, but, um, it doesn't really hurt anymore. Like my, my elbows don't have any pain. So, so if you're doing something that's causing that, don't do that, you know, like do something, maybe adjust. I, I don't know what it is. So like, I'm very fortunate that see, I'm stretching out. Uh, you got to stretch out a lot. That's one of my regiments, but constantly stretching, um, not constantly, but throughout the day for sure. But um, yeah, I, I just, it's just something that is constantly changing and my body, it gets in like fighting shape as we, as we get closer to like a show or or, you know, I have something coming up or this or that, or if I've been, you know, and, and, and it can get out of fighting. Like if I get injured, uh, sick and I haven't been working out as much, uh, around the holidays, there's a lot of cookies in that cookie jar, a lot of nice treats to have a lot of amazing food. I I love savory, you know, just straight up food and, you know, uh, I love just, I mean, I mean, I'm a glutton, like I'll I'll eat too much. So, I mean, there's that, you know, and and I try to control, control myself a little bit, but, but at the same time, I mean, I'm living life, best life over here. And a lot of it was beer. So, so I, I wonder if some of the inflammation can, can be diet, you know, and, and I've been, I changed up my diet like a week ago, maybe it's two weeks ago by now, probably just about a week and a half ago, 10 days where I'm eating, I don't know, like in general, I'm eating probably four to two, two to 400 less calories. I'm not really like tracking myself, but I'm just eating less, one less thing. And there you go, you know, and I'm drinking a lot less beer that that's probably more than 200, 300 calories right there, having a couple beers. Um, so anyway, back to the inflammation, back to back to Dr. Herrera over here. Um, Things are constantly changing. So like my elbows don't hurt anymore, but now like my back sometimes, I'm going to sound like, I don't mean to sound old. Like I'm, I don't, I'm not old, but every now and again, my back will hurt. And so I like have to like, ah, I'm going to take it easy for a couple days or, and it's not my spine, but it's like the side. Like if, if, if you're talking about your spine here, it's like the right side 
right next to your spine where it's like your muscle. And I feel like that's got to be stress. I wonder if that's stress or something I did like doing deadlifts too much and it's just like, okay, it's like overly sore. Things like that happen to me much too often these days. Like, because you have to like, you have to get your body into shape, but then if you if you have to take it easy as well, it's just a, a conundrum. So for me, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm constantly changing my routine these days, and that is a problem. I need to settle on something that will work workout wise and you know whatever so like um i've had issues with my ankles my ankles being sprained i i sprained my ankles like <sighs> one and then like during the the same song but la later during you know i was trying to jump on the other ankle or on the other foot not ankle and rolled that ankle and so like two of my ankle this wasn't recently this was a couple years ago years ago like at least five years ago, um, <clears throat> and it was in Europe actually, but I sprained two ankles in one night, and and that was painful. And I just had to take it easy for for a day or two. And we still played, but I just like really babied the worst ankle, and then I couldn't really jump much. So <laughs> after a couple shows, I was like, yeah, I think I can jump again. So I mean, there's those are very real, and and, and it and it's not young or old because. I was getting injured when I was young, you know, I was sprained, you know, sprained ankles and rolling my ankle and uh, I broke my toe on, on one warp tour, um, you know, things like that. So I just, I'm rolling with the punches at this point and <clears throat> trying to keep my body in shape, kind of cheap, keep my lungs, you know, my voice, uh, strong and, Honestly, the voice and, and you know, your back, you got to keep your back strong to, to be traveling all over the place and playing these shows and holding the bass on is, is probably what tweaks my back. It is literally having that bass on for hours and hours and hours, day after day after day. Like that, af after so many years, has given me a little bit of scolorosis where scoliosis, where like I'm slightly, you know, your, your spine is curved a little bit. That's a very real thing. So I don't know if I really answered your question, but uh, just to put a fine point on your elbow question, something I actually did aside from, you know, stop lifting super heavy was I got I got a, like a rolly thing from like, I don't know, I ordered it online in, in this like rolly uh, muscle massager. And that that's bomb. It really, it really helps a lot. And I was getting like my hands were hurting randomly now and again. And not so much that I couldn't play or anything, but it was just more like, why did my hands hurt? I don't know. So I, I got this hand massager and you put it in and it's like, it looks like you're, you're putting it into the box on uh, Dune. I don't know if you've seen Dune where, uh, is it is his name Peter? I don't know. Uh, I, Peter Atreyu or whatever his name is, the main character. Um, he puts his hand in this box and that's what it looks like. I mean, it doesn't look really, it doesn't really look like that, actually. <laughs> I don't know why I said it looked like that. All right. Anyway, uh, I got to go in a minute. I'm going to do two quick ones and we will, I'll see you next week. All right. Cheers. Hey, Mike. Uh, this is Isaac in Colorado. I just wanted to, I just found your podcast. I just wanted to, uh, to let you know that uh, I had a great time at uh, the concert that I went to in February of 2020, right before the pandemic uh, hit. You, MXPX was my first concert in uh, 1995 at Soma in San Diego mm. uh, with Dogwood. And you guys were the last concert I saw before um, the pandemic hit in 2020. I also saw you guys in Boston, I think, in 98. Uh, MXPX has been uh, a mainstay. It's been awesome listening to you guys for uh, almost 30 years and uh, enjoying your podcast. And thanks for everything you've done over the years. It's been great listening to you guys. And I'm having fun introducing you guys to my kids. Peace. Dude, great to hear from you. Thanks so much for the message. Man, Denver. Yeah, that was a great show in Denver, uh, 2020. I remember it well. 
Uh, always love coming to Denver. We'll be back, so stay tuned. All right, thanks, Isaac. One last one, and then uh, I got to get out of here. All right, cheers. Hey, Mike. This is uh, Danny, who runs MXPX Memes. I've never called in. I never had a question I felt was, like, worth asking. But then tonight I was watching, you know, uh, there's the compilation punk rock show VHS tapes, if you remember those, and they've all got the Darren Doan music videos on there and Trick Magnets on there, right? And then towards the end of the video, there's that moment where you reach across the table and you, like, grab Tom's arm and then he says something, and then you laugh, and then it's like you're all having a fun time on the set. My wife was like, what are they doing? Why did Mike reach across the table and grab Tom's arm? And I'm like, you know what? I never – I don't – no idea. I just always thought it was just some goofy thing that happened on the set, and they kept it in the video. I don't have a real answer. So is there an answer? Like, what was going on? Like, you reach across the table. You grab Tom's arm. Like, why? was he, Were you trying to, like, purposely mess up the take or something or – and it just ended up in the video, or what's the deal there? So uh, anyway, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Danny. Thanks for calling in, man. I'm glad you finally had a question. MXPX memes. If you guys like memes and you like MXPX, why not follow MXPX memes? Boom. There you go. There's your advertisement. But um, I, I'm trying to remember Chick Magnet. It was filmed in a diner downtown Bremerton, here in West Bremerton. Um, two, one, two, three blocks over, down on 6th Street, and then down a bunch of blocks. But it's it, you could walk. I mean, it's a ways from the studio, but you could walk. Um, I remember that scene. I don't remember what was said, but I'm going to guess that... I was telling Tom something really funny and Tom was being a weirdo and we were trying to like make each other laugh. That's what I think we were trying to make each other laugh and the camera was rolling and it may have been a thing where Darren Doan, the, the director was saying, Hey, all right, you know, talk to each other, you know, do some other things, grab, you know, Grab Tom's arm, like that could have been too. I don't honestly, man. That's that's like a. It's hard to remember the detail on that one. Um, it was funny though because when Yuri shot the fry scene where he turns a salt shaker into a plate of French fries, that was so much fun. I mean, just to like, we're doing special effects, really awesome. You know, I mean, I you know. Easy, easy, easy to do, but we just had such a blast making that video. Everybody just, we were all, there was no real actors. It was just all our friends, and the the line cook was one of the, the crew, and uh, we just had a blast. We really did. So I think what you're seeing there is just us having fun, and they were just rolling like you do. Capture, 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 keep rolling. Yep, we got it, and... Uh, we made that video, I want to say, for 500 bucks. Like, I want to say we made all of those videos for 500 bucks. Three videos. Four videos, I think. It was, no, 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 no. It was, it was that weekend. It was Chick Magnet uh, doing time and moved to Bremerton. Three videos in one weekend. And probably for, like, for like nothing. Sorry, my, my eye just stuck. Um yeah, you guys, uh, it's time. I'm going to head out. That's a great question. Good place to end it. Thanks for calling in. Um, that's it. Yeah, mxpeaks.com, please, if you want to call in, 360-830-6660. Do you guys see my eye? It's like freaking out. Like, does that ever happen when you're not, when you haven't slept? I went to the game last night, had a pretty hard day of drinking and night of hanging out and going to the game it was great but i'm a little little out of it i guess hey no excuses no excuses you get to see me in all my glory right all my warts and all take me or leave me that's it 
I appreciate you guys. MXPeaks.com. If you are planning on coming to the shows in November, Chicago, Milwaukee, please go get tickets. MXPeaks.com is the place to find uh, easy, easy uh, links. You can just click on right under the posters and boom, you're good to go. Um, remember, if you want to call in and leave a voicemail, 360-830-6660. And shout out to my producer, producer Bob McKnight. Thanks for doing it. Um, his show, Bob and Katie Show, is also a podcast. Him and his wife, they talk about nothing that I talk about. It's all really weird butt stuff. Um, maybe not all butt stuff, but it's all weird, and I love it. So uh, <laughs> love you. Love you, Bob. All right, you guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast. Um, until next week, let's find out what happens. Cheers. Cheers.